Right, so good afternoon or good morning, uh, whichever the case is. Uh, my name is Marta Lorenzo and I'm the chair of uh, UMAC, the International Committee of ICOM for University Museums and Collections. And this is the first of five or maybe more uh, web seminars devoted to um, the issue of uh, COVID and the impact it has been having in our museums, in our lives in general. It has been in many respects devastating for so many of our communities and in, including our families and our friends. There's been a lot of uh, suffering and sadness and um, more recently, we saw anger and violence and uh, in some countries, and this is all very uh, sad. And uh, so uh, as we reopen our, not every country is in the same situation, but as we reopen activities for the public, I think it's important that we share our experiences across a broad spectrum of countries because precisely because we are not in the same situation. Uh, for example, it was very interesting to have uh, news from our colleagues in China and in Asia this morning and how they're dealing with clearly different approaches, cult even cultural, different, different cultural approaches to issues like um, uh, like um, information, con uh, privacy, and so on, and how that uh, impacts on the lives of our museums and our universities, <laughs> of course. So that's uh, something we uh, definitely will discuss. And the session will last more or less one hour. And I will, there's no one really registered to speak. So uh, I will just um, go uh, through, you know, different people randomly, okay? And meanwhile, if anyone wants to inter intervene, they can. Uh, just raise your hand and I will uh, give you the word. It's really wonderful to have you and thank you so much. It's a brilliant and very diverse in terms of countries audience and uh, let's uh, let's start you know let's start so perhaps because this is devoted to reopening uh, and how we're dealing with reopening it would be nice uh, to um, if you could provide some information in the chat whether in your country university museums or museums in general are reopening are still in lockdown or um, are have already reopened. For example, in Portugal, uh, museums in general and university museums in particular, not all, but those that are outside the campus, because that's a, an issue we have to deal with. Uh, if the campus is closed and the, our university museums is inside, physically uh, located inside the campus, that may raise some challenges. Uh, you, you probably cannot, even if you want to open, you cannot open. To the public but uh, in Portugal for example the university museums have reopened lots of uh, limitations uh, this morning we discussed the IKEA museum which is I think many museums not only university you know IKEA and uh, the Swedish uh, uh, manufacturer of furniture where you you enter and you cannot go back you just walk and you have a one a single way circuit and you cannot uh, interact with anything and so that there's that there is the the maximum capacity of uh, people per room there's also some university museums are uh, some museums in general are um, controlling the temperature at the entrance which is controversial uh, ray, may raise some you know privacy concerns although they are not recording no they're not registering the data they're just measuring and so another thing has been the dematerialization, if I may say the word, everything that has to do with paper, like leaflets, brochures, and everything have been removed. Um, science centers, I think this situation of um, uh, reopening is, is, is particularly challenging for science centers, 
because you have to touch, huh? you have to interact. Um, uh, and uh, the way they are dealing with uh, either you kind of, uh, okay, one visit to a touch and then you have to disinfect and it's complicated uh, in terms of resources and so on. I don't know if there, anyone here works in a science center. It would be nice to hear from them. Another challenge that I think we need to address, face, is the challenge for the visually impaired and for people with um, uh, physical imperities because you, you, if you really cannot touch, how are you going to provide access to so many of us who cannot uh, see, you know, or have difficulty in, in seeing? So that's also a challenge that is posed by this um, uh, period, which we don't know if it's going to be long or short. Uh, and it has, uh, you know, made us rethink, in many instances, rethink what is the essence of what we're doing in museums, you know, uh, what is how to balance digital and uh, presence, physical presence, what is it that we're doing, you know. So instead of talking monologue, this is not a monologue, huh? I, 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 I want to warn you, it's not, it's not going to be a monologue. But um, I will, I'm very, very curious to hear Gilbert from Lebanon, okay? So where are you, Gilbert? Are you there? You can hear me? Yes. Okay, so introduce yourself. Do you work for a university museum? Okay, um, no, actually I'm, I'm a museology student at the Lebanese University in Beirut. Uh -huh. And I'm preparing for my uh, uh, PhD for next year. So uh, just um, curious to know how, every museum is dealing with the situations now and uh, I worked for um, I worked on a project for um, university museums in Beirut mm -hmm. it was a private uh, university and uh, we worked to uh, re renovate the museum and make it more accessible and to integrate it in the students life because it was not known by the students it was not uh, often visited Right. Um, so we introduced uh, new plans, how to integrate it and to work uh, uh, on uh, on a new uh, plan because okay. uh, I'm I'm an architect and uh, right. so I'm studying now museology. Um, here in Lebanon, we are, uh, the university museums are still closed um, because uh, all the museums, are, uh, all the universities are uh, are closed. closed. Mm -hmm. um, and the public museums, they are the normal ones uh, i mean uh, not the university museums uh, they opened uh, last week but okay. with uh, like uh, safety measures and uh, so social distancing and uh, all yeah. these measures yeah. so mainly i don't have much to say about our situation um i can say that uh, we lack uh, like um a community to work together we don't like really uh, communicate uh yeah. here uh, all together, we don't have um, like um, a network. Actually, yeah, I don't I know. know about I know, I know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, as I told you, you're the first person. I mean, okay, occasionally I have had people uh, coming to UMAC conference, I think once or twice from Lebanon. And uh, the Lebanon University Museums are actually well represented in our UMAC World Database of University Museums. So if you go there, there's lots of uh, uh, museums and collections from uh, Lebanese universities, but not, we never really had um, active participation. So if you put me in touch with people, I mean, apart from this, yeah. uh, you know, get me in touch with uh, your, you know, professor or whatever. And yeah. Maybe we can create something in Lebanon. It would be, it would be very interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it could be very interesting. Yeah, to kind of because there are many, many universities. Well, sure. it's a small country, of course, but there are many an important heritage in uh, Lebanese universities that should be preserved and valued. We know nothing if it's uh, if it's uh, open, if the collections are open to the public, uh, closed, and so on. So I'll be very interested 
in, some of uh, the some of the university museums are open for the public as yeah. others no others ah, not yeah, yeah. We, we we had some like two or three new ones uh, opened la uh, during the last five years and they are very uh, interesting yeah and they have uh, like a unique collections so uh, yeah i recommend to have contact uh, of with of course okay them. put me in touch okay put me in touch yeah, of course I will, thank so much, Gilbert. And I will now give, uh, you know, uh, the word to uh, Gustavo. Gustavo is from Colombia, right? Gustavo, tell us where you are. Gustavo. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you, Marta, and other very uh, friendly, uh, Sebastian and other ones. It's a pleasure to, to stay here. As you see, this is actually my museum, but this is not open. <laughs> yeah. But we are very active uh, on, uh, on networks. Uh, yeah. We made a lot of videos, a lot of uh, uh, dig digital uh, creators with uh, Google uh, Arts and Culture uh, platforms. And uh, our, our university is closed now, mm -hmm. but uh, probably in the middle of uh, July, on the first uh, week of uh, August, probably we reopen. We, okay, we so you're planning now. You're planning yes, now to we reopen. Are planning, mm -hmm. And we made a special plan to reopening with the uh, laws, special laws in Bogota. Yeah. And some of uh, uh, special uh, recommendation health. Right. Uh, uh, preventions, but uh, we we are very surprised how the the people are uh, engaged with us uh, 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 through the online uh, social networks online, online. and uh, mm -hmm. for us it's very satisfying to 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 know that the people uh, um, ask about more contents or uh, yeah. interact with uh, our uh, videos or we, we made uh, uh, also. Uh, Facebook Live every every week, uh, right. or or two times a week because we have a, a special page of our university and other page only on, of our museum, and right. we made a uh, live uh, in both uh, platforms. And right, one and more. Gustavo, yeah. and Gustavo, in your planning, in your plan, you're planning to reopen. What is going to be the major change that you think in terms of uh, experience for visitors? What is going to be the major change? Is it like less visit? For, I mean, what, what, what in, is it the single circuit? Is it the limitation of the capacity of the museum? Well, well yes, the, 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 the main thing is the limitation of capacity and the other is to, to uh, make after each uh, uh, one hour, two hours we planning to, to cleaning the, the museum yeah. again. And for the reason we made a, a short uh, time to service uh, from 10 to maybe five. Oh, okay. Uh, normally our, our, our hours okay. is from nine to six. Okay, so you're imposing a time limit per visitor. So the, if I enter at nine, I have to leave it at 10. Is that it? Is that yes, what you're yes, saying? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. Because we need, we need to, to, to minimum uh, a, half, a half hour or a quarter of hour to cleaning uh, the, everything. the museum. Yeah. Our yeah. museum is not too big, but uh, we we think that the, the maximum capacity is six, 60, 60 persons, uh, 20 yeah. persons for each floor and, and rotated the, the people. Okay. One thing that's very interesting, and now I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's to raise the question of how you count, how you calculate the maximum capacity, because different countries, uh, have different uh, approaches. So yeah, it's, this morning we mentioned at least three possibilities. One is like, okay, just counting the two meter or 1.5 meter distance and calculating yeah. how much the capacity of the room. That's one possibility. Then another possibility is the maximum number of people per square meters, okay? So in some countries they are approaching that for restaurants, for example, like uh, one person per five square meters, or I don't know exactly. So person per square meter. And then another thing, which some, some countries are using, is the uh, percent, like for example, um, instead of having a max, you can have like a quarter of capacity of the room. So instead of the full capacity, 
uh, you can have like a quarter, 25% of the capacity. So how are you dealing with this? Are you calculating based on the social distance, one, one or 1 1.5 yes. or we, two meters? We, it varies from country use, to country. We use the bot uh, techniques. One of these, as, as you see in the front of the museum, we have a, a platea that we can yeah. control yeah. the people, the entrance yeah. with a guard and inside the inside the museum we we it plans only uh, 20 20 persons by floor and okay. when when it's flu uh, when it's uh, full <coughs> we close and the yeah. people out, outside need to wait and uh, this is the the way that we think and pr we plans to to put some signals in the on the floor about the distance social distance and uh, especially all, all the people need needs to wear the mask because it's a, a law uh, here in Colombia and mm. and use the uh, alcohol gel and other yeah, of course uh, of creations. course yeah yeah okay thanks Gustavo let me pass okay. maybe to a neighbor country for example Mexico Mexico. Okay, Sayuri, tell us what's the situation. First of all, identify yourself. I'm sorry, maybe you identified yourself in the chat, but I didn't have, uh, I was not following at the beginning. Where are you from? Um, I am from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and I work at the University of Guadalajara Museum of the Arts. I am the responsible of the uh, Department of Education. So th there will be a lot of changes, but also uh, in in a personal way, I, I consider that in in any change that that we will work for the museums, it is important to 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 take care about uh, our personal about about ourselves right. when we are like, talking to the others, right. and and also to to feel. Um, the way we we feel the 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 spaces the spaces at the museum as a space of of um of safe uh, as a safe place yes in in that way so that that will be so important but is your museum open to the public now no it is not open in Mexico uh, still in the whole um country uh, all the museums are uh, already closed. Mexico yeah. also, Mexico is not doing well, right? In terms of COVID, the, the, in terms of numbers, right? Of uh, infections, no. To be clear, no. <laughs> That's what I thought, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but our city. So. But, but by example, in our city, um, the people like, or, or the way that the, the government has, has treated the, the situation has been good in, in some way. Okay. because all, all the time here to uh, the to wear mask is is like um it's obligatory it's mandatory yeah. Yeah. you are now at home or are you at the uni at the university are you at home <laughs> I, I i live in at the museum you this live is at the museum my, this is wow <laughs> yeah this is the, the director oh. this is hi director <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. We are five of the team here uh, with Sayuri. She was the one that she. Uh, 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 I my number. Yeah. yeah. But we are here, five people. Just don't five listen. Yeah. But keep the distance. You know, yeah. keep the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we are so excited. I'm, I'm sorry. We don't do that. We're delighted. We're delighted to have you. I mean, all of you. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, okay, now Brazil. There's lots of people from Brazil. It's hard to choose. I don't know. Who wants to speak first? Jorge? Sao Paulo. University of Sao Paulo, is that it? Yeah, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, it's nice to meet you all. Um, I actually work at the Universidade Federal de São Carlos. It's not in São yeah, Paulo. I know where it is, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And, uh, and we're thinking of uh, installing a natural history museum. 
Wow. So probably I'm not the only uh, I'm on, I'm the only one who actually don't work in the museum yet. <laughs> But we're trying to raise the funds and um, to get it done. It's but not of course, easy like, now with the economy. The economy is oh, not no, easy. No, yeah, no. That's an idea that we we put in the drawer, you know. But São Carlos is where there's there's fossils. Oh, on the street you walk over the fossils, right? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. No, fantastic. we we have plenty of material already, you know, to open the the, the natural history museum. Fantastic. We just don't have the funds. We have the, you know, the prints. We already have the, the, the building planned. Uh -huh. But I was interesting actually, because my university is also closed and I teach zoology classes. Yeah, and but you teach online. Have... You teach online. But... So this is the discussion. We are stopped. We don't, we're not teaching ever since the, the pandemics reached Brazil. But we are trying to, uh, some of us actually are trying to engage in uh, remote teaching. Yeah. And because, of course, the year is going and the of student. Yeah. There is actually one of these sessions, I, I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be about how, how we deal with uh, object-based teaching and exactly, since it yeah. stopped, you know, and I think mm -hmm. the discussion will be very interesting because, um, I mean, if you teach based on your collections, say zoology sure, yeah. or paleontology mm -hmm. or archaeology or whatever, I mean, art collections, uh, mm -hmm. how are you going to, you know, use Zoom? It's, it's totally crazy, you know, it's yeah. how do you, how are you going to, it's like, it, it's like a laboratory, it, it should be like a laboratory, so it's really pretty, it should be a physical presence and handling of objects and so on. Yeah. So there'll be a session. I think it's not the twelve, the next one. It's going to be the other one. I think it's the, the Kirsten one. one. Kirsten, mm -hmm. it's the one that you're going to moderate, I think. Yes. So that will be very, very interesting. So, and I invite mm -hmm. you all to join, you know, sure. because yeah, that's no. a, a topic to be addressed. And uh, because this is not going to be just this academic year. Well, you are just starting in Southern Hemisphere, right? Mm -hmm. But um, we're, we're closing here. The academic year is just closing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just starting. So you really have to think about how it's going to be. Because, we haven't had the chance to start yet because our academic year starts roughly on March yeah. and then we only had a couple of weeks of classes and then we shut yeah yeah we yeah, shut exactly. down so exactly. I didn't teach any classes this year yet right right okay and now so, we'll, we'll discuss but because our public is so uh, heterogeneous yeah. So some of the students really don't have access I to know. internet. Yeah, because computers. that's also a problem. And Kirsten, take note because I think this pro. I've been I've been hearing a lot of. I've been receiving emails from our community about how undemocratic, you know, mm -hmm. this uh, Zoom platforms and stuff is because it really presupposes that you have access to internet. Yeah. everywhere and this is really in a, a problem of inequality for students right. it's a major major problem of course not so much in developed countries i would say like us you know everyone has fiber and super mm -hmm. i don't know 3g whatever 4g 7g whatever but it's not the case everywhere and uh, no. uh, even in Especially europe in you have problems no. with uh, distribution of the signal and so on so yeah. i think this is going to be a topic of interest mm -hmm. for that session of kirsten yeah, sure. But I'll let my colleagues from Brazil. That yeah, actually exactly. I was going to pass to them because, uh, and wow. we can talk later about the new museum. Okay, so I can uh, yeah. also we can discuss. Uh, you can discuss with me later on or next week or so on. So, okay. who else? Okay, Diego. Diego, okay. please uh, go ahead. Uh, I can talk a little bit about museums in Brazil. Uh, I don't have to go very political here, but you know how Brazil is a mess right now. Uh, and you know, it's not only Brazil, Brazil, right? It's not only Brazil. Don't be, yeah. Okay, but uh, the fact is, uh, we have. Uh, Where uh, are you from, Diego? Sorry. Uh, Where are you from? Fio Cruz, Museu da Vida. Fio Cruz, yeah. That's yeah. Rio. That's Rio, yeah. So most of the regulation are state, uh, uh, local, are state wise. So each state has different regulations, and uh, regulations. 
Okay, go on. The go regulations on. are not based on health, uh, actually health measures, but mostly about like political affiliation to the president. So some states that should be shut were open and some that should be shut are shut. So if at, uh, for instance, in Rio and Sao Paulo, where most of the museums are located, uh, they are shut. But you know, there are states like Santa Catarina where there are a lot of museums that are open, even mm -hmm. in the middle of the epidemic. So it's not equal uh, across the country. The country is very right. uh, different. Uh, well, Brazil so is also very big, right? Even yeah. if it wasn't politicized, which is being politicized, you know, the pandemic is being politicized. Even if there wasn't that factor, Brazil is, is still is very big. Is so we would expect some kind of yeah. different. Mm -hmm. So talking more about like the Southeast perspective, like Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, which are quite in the same, uh, were the first one to have cases and I kind of in the same stage. Yeah. We already have some uh, param parameters uh, on how to open uh, the things, but uh, mostly uh, we don't have a specific date. So it's mostly like, okay, when things get uh, better, we're going to open this and then and then the museums are in the middle to the end of this opening line. Uh, at uh, Museo da Vida, we don't have a specific date to open right now. We don't have a specific plan. But we are about but to do, have- But do you, sorry to interrupt, but Diego, do you have a plan? Because Museo da Vida is an interactive museum. Exactly. And so how are you going to deal with the problem of touching? And, you know, yeah. how is it going to happen? We, do know, we, we don't have the answer yet. Uh, we, are, we have some discussions, but we're still very unsure about how to do it. We are based on interaction, both between people and uh, equipment and between people uh, and, and between the people among themselves. Right. So both okay. things are forbidden right now. So we don't know how we are going to open because we don't. We can do like single line uh, course. We don't. We can do like one way because it's very spread in the museum. It's yeah. impossible to do one way visit to the museum of life. Uh, we, if you take all the social and the physical interaction from the museum, very few things are left. Uh, so it's a big problem. We don't know what to do right now. What yeah. we are doing is to put a lot of things online. So we're doing yes. a lot of digital things, which are not, as you said, democratic, because that not goes to our major target public that's unserved yeah. audiences. We have been doing, trying to do a lot of things with those communities. We have a long tie relationship with those communities. I know. We have through to develop a network of uh, yeah. a network of support of these communities, yeah. but as far as as uh, museology uh, toward this community, don't know how to solve this yet. Yeah. Because going digital is not going to solve it. So we are uh, here to listen because we don't yeah. have any. Answers. You're at home at the moment, at Diego. Home. You're yes. at home. Yes. Yes. All, yes. all, all staff at at home. Uh, okay. The only ones that are going to the museum are the ones the conservators. They yeah. have to. Do from time to time to check the yeah of course, of course. but uh every, all, all other staff are at home right now yeah yeah anyone else from brazil before i move on to argentina and cecilia anyone else from brazil would like to share um from a different state perhaps i, I think there's rio there's sao paulo and there is um this George yeah. so follow to okay so we we move on to to oh to, I'm oh yeah okay go on I'm in, so, I'm from Brazil also from São Paulo São Paulo uh, eh? from yes which from the you University of São Paulo okay. a small house Casa Casa Titona Yaya oh is I know a, Marta Merendino is the okay. yes <laughs> I I work there as educator. Um, we are closed. We yeah. don't have uh, no idea when it will reopen, but um, we are thinking how many things will change then, because we have many students there. Yeah. And we receive groups of students yeah. from basic to superior school. You, you mean children, school groups, school groups. Yes, school Not university. Groups. Okay, yeah, 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 school okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be a problem because before, yes. the, before a, a teacher puts, grabs, you know, 50 kids 
and puts them in a bus and takes them to a museum, it's going to take a while before that happens. So uh, muse university museums that depend a lot on school groups in terms of, uh, you know, um, number of visitors and so on, that will take a while. It's like almost like festivals, you know, summer festivals. And uh, it's going to be at the end of the line before we can... Uh, so you have a lot of school groups in your audiences, is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. they are. The, we have also uh, small groups, uh, familiar groups that yeah. come. That yeah. will be easier, but that school will groups easier, yeah. will be yeah. very difficult. Yeah, very difficult. It's going to be very difficult, yeah. And it's going to be a generation, I mean, we don't know how long this will take, but it's going to be a generation of children that uh, you know, usually used to have through school contact with museums and uh, and maybe some of them would be the only, you know, only time in life that they would visit a museum and it's going to be a bit, uh, I don't know, it's going to be lost uh, at least for, for a while. And that's that should concern us to, to reach them, to reach them through other means. Thank you so much, Ava. And I will, um, Diego, very briefly, Diego, because I want yeah. to move on to Argentina. We have lots of countries. Just like to point that uh, mostly university museums in Brazil and science uh, museums too, they highly depend on school groups. I know, I know. So that, uh, very uh, important topic yes. for Brazil. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Um, Cecilia, darling, how is La Plata? How is Museo de la Plata? How is the beautiful Universidad de la Plata? How is the situation of COVID in Argentina? How are things going for you? It's really lovely to see you. Give us an overview. Okay. Uh, in Argentina, the, the situation is very di different from the, the metropolitan zone. It's uh, a bad situation. You mean but Buenos Aires? It's different from it's, Buenos Aires? No, Buenos Aires and Great Buenos Aires. Okay. Including La Plata and Senada, where are our universities is yeah. um, uh, going. Uh, we don't know when I when when we are going to come back to university. It's closed. Uh, we are um, teaching by online. Uh, it's a very hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, we don't know uh, our museum uh, in which form is going to, to reopen when yes. this happens because as the most of the museums uh, of the college are mostly de 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 devoted to scholar groups. Yeah, and I know. So we are thinking in a change our public to reach uh, other publics. We are <laughs> We are thinking and talking uh, with enough, uh, maybe small groups, uh, yes. grandfathers, and grandmothers. Different, and different audiences, Cecilia. You're very creative. I know. I think you're great. You're great online. You are very active. In fact, re maybe people could, you know, put on the chat uh where you the you know the link to your museum website and where we can find you on social networks it would be very nice if we had kind of uh you know a sheet of all the with all the the, the information because you are the museo de physica is super active you know it's uh, online yeah. it's one of the good examples that i like to to give you know of uh, really engaging activities yes yeah. This, there is a, a great work to uh, Mariana Santa Maria is doing, uh, yeah. but she's pregnant. She's going to know, have a baby. The first and, thing she did when she entered was to show me the, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the belly. She's totally pregnant. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, so the, anyway. the, mm -hmm. the network uh, work, the network um, communication is going to, to be slow. Uh, when Mariana is uh, enter uh, her uh, listen. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But okay, Mariana. I am going to, to put the, the link. Yeah, mm -hmm. do that, do that. Mariana, would you like to add something? Yes, um, we are trying to be active in the digital world, but it's a very complicated thing too because we want to fulfill our mission as museum. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we don't want to put contents on online. Sure. Anything. So the um, it's a lot of work because we have to think what what is the complement for the teachers? What's the complement for our faculty? Oh. And but our missions. But in terms of infrastructure, I, I have the feeling, but correct me if I'm wrong, I have the feeling that university museums and collections, you know, uh, they are kind of more prepared, they're better prepared than other museums for the digital world, because in the sense at least of the, of the infrastructure, because they, they can use, if they want, um, the digital infrastructure that is pre prepared already by their parent institutions for, uh, you know, uh, the, the teaching, online teaching, the MOOCs and all that, you know, yes. it's something that you are using, right? Yes, and, and the working network with other spaces like the Planetario or yeah. other yeah. museums, and we are thinking now a lot, <laughs> What, yeah. what, what will we do? But um, one of the things is this. Uh, this is an opportunity to, yeah. to connect it with the world. It is. it is, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Instagram Lives, we don't try that yet, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's one of our plans. Um, chats with similar yeah. museums about things, about themes. Yeah. And I, you know what? I think that we should risk more, you know? We should kind of okay, just go ahead and just do a yeah. Instagram live, and that's it. You know, it's, it's nobody's gonna bother. It's not if it's not perfect. You know, it's not gonna. Yeah, well, for example, Cecilia and I, we are, yeah. we don't have that problem, but we're yeah. staff. It's a little scare. Yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah, just do it because people want to connect with you, and so yeah. just do it. You know. Um, thanks so much, uh, Argentina. Anyone else from Argentina, apart from La Plata? Okay, then we move to North America. And I couldn't, um, I couldn't, um, I couldn't um, start by anyone else other than our dearest board member, Nicole. I know you've been uh, posting something, and then John, and then John, I want to hear John, from John. But Nicole, and then others, but um, Nicole, you, I know you've been, uh, putting some information um, on the chat, but could you tell us what's the situation, first of all, where you are and, uh, and how is the situation there in terms of university museums? So I'm in Wyoming, which is a really big state with not a lot of people. So it's a very different experience than what John will probably talk about on the East Coast. We have very few cases here. Um, because so we're pretty spread out. We got um, information from the university administration yesterday that we are allowed to reopen. I submitted a plan to them um, over a month ago because I wanted to be sure we had a plan in place before a plan was made for us. Um, so I used guidelines from AAM and ICOM and submitted that to administration. They came back with a plan. The only change they have is that every employee in the museum, including student employees, will have to get tested. Okay, but that's good. Um, right? It is, except for in Wyoming, we have limited tests. So it's going to be an issue is if everybody can get tested. Our student athletes came back to campus this week. So um, the tests went to athletics first because athletics is very important in American universities. Um, so that's where we are. We just got the plan yesterday. I sent it to the staff. We're all going to yeah. make our notes in it. A lot of stuff is unclear. Like we all have to wear masks, but who's paying yeah. for the masks? Is the yeah. university paying? Not the university. The university is not paying for your masks. No. It, it's not clear. Okay. It's not clear if it comes out of my budget or if it comes out of the university budget. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's okay. issues like that we're still dealing with. So I mean, I would major say- major changes in the exhibition on the floor? I mean, what, what kind of, what major changes are you going to introduce? So we're gonna have do the social distancing. We're gonna yeah. have to hire more security yeah. to make sure that there's um, not people crowding in, in the galleries, but we don't have a, a large, attendance generally in the summer because this is our downtime with no students around but so you are we'll in campus okay. you are your yeah. museum is in campus so uh, it's it's not only your museum that's going to reopen it's the whole campus so is it no 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 oh, okay no just the museum the archives um athletics okay. 
and um, the child care center are opening. So okay. the rest of the buildings are still restricted to non-university employees okay. and students. Okay. So okay. it's a bit weird because we'll be open to the yeah. public, but yeah. the rest of campus isn't. Okay, okay. Because that that can be a challenge, huh? to to enter the campus without being, uh, you know, staff and so on. Um, right. So I move to to John. John, how is Washington? How is the situation? How is your museum? Well, the museum situation. First issue was was safety and keeping jobs. There's been a, a lot of uh, uh, damage to employment in the U.S. because a lot of the museums are dependent upon earned revenue or or other sources, not not necessarily governmental. Uh, so the sources of funding being unstable. Our first priority was to keep people from getting laid off. Of so we had to make sure everyone was working. That meant conservators collection managers who had no collections, we had to get them busy online. So our first priority was to make sure nobody was vulnerable to a layoff. Uh, what we found is that the university really isn't paying attention though to the museum operation because we're very different. Uh, they care about students, faculty, and courses. Yeah. And so we have to guide the university in what we're doing. We don't wait for them, but we tell them what we think needs yeah. to happen. Uh, as far as opening, we're in no hurry. We're going to wait until the students come back in the fall. Okay. They, we believe students will be back in the fall. Uh, but what's interesting is that we, we also realize that this is an opportunity to make some fundamental changes on what we do. Absolutely. So uh, we're rethinking some galleries and changing the way we work on them. We're changing our store from a retail store to a learning educational facility. That wow. We buy a few things. Explain so we're, more. We're, explain. We're explain. working on some conceptual differences because while we're closed, no one's looking, and we're spending our time really trying to ask what what are we doing and why? What's the impact of our exhibitions? Is it right. just artistic to show cultural artifacts? Right. Or, or can we can we offer more messages on important things like sustainability, cultural literacy, understanding right. amongst people's uh, diversity and the like? Uh, mm -hmm two things that relate to that. One, uh, our audiences have fundamentally changed in the last three months. Three months ago, you had to come on site to participate in, in an educational activity. And we put on 200 programs a year. Every, every two, three times a day, there's a lecture, there's a film, there's something right. educational in the museum. Uh, uh, but now we realize that many of the people, and these are the people live in town uh, aren't coming, but they all know how to get on Zoom. Yes. And three months ago, they did not. No, and I so know. It's, it's great. <laughs> and what's happened to our model is the model has changed for programming. So before, our model was like a theater. You yeah. went on time, sat in your chair, yeah. or took yeah. another, and then left. It was a theatrical performance. Now, it's live studio audience. So I it's love like a that. television I love program. That metaphor. It's a live it's audience yeah. and and uh, video. Exactly. So that uh, a program, I'll give you for instance, a program that got 20, 30 people would come on Saturday to look at, at textiles. Right. Uh, this Saturday, we're going to have 200. Amazing. And yeah. most are not in Washington. There's a bunch from Los Angeles, a bunch. So what we're finding and alumni who went to the university and others, but, but, but in our case, uh, people in the, that, that love the museum, they're coming from around. So we're actually finding more audiences for programming. Right. It's just something we've learned. But the other thing is, is, is really different. And our, our collections are global textiles. So great. part of our messaging is yeah. the diversity of people, respect of for cultures and the like. And five blocks away from where I am, we have the protests going on I every know. night. Yeah, the I the know. protest. I was there two days ago. Yeah. Extremely courteous, respectful. We know. Uh, we know. Gentle, remarkable. I walked around yesterday. I, yeah. I spent some time there. There were riots. There were riots in my neighborhood. We boarded up uh, because it was it was dangerous on Sunday. Monday, not good. Now it's a it's that's calmed down a bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the but the protests and the, and all of that and what's happened in the U.S. is that there has been a, a, a breathtaking introspection 
uh, about people as human beings everywhere in all walks of life. Uh, you wouldn't know, but for the last four days, the American Alliance of Museums held its annual meeting virtually. Yes, yes. So there were a few thousand people on online programs and they changed the program on Wednesday for a discussion on race. Yeah, of course. And what mm -hmm. museums do, and 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 a bunch of us in museums have been having Zoom meetings with our staffs to talk about issues of race, and it's generational, it's racial, and the like. And I had my 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 meeting for two hours after the AAM meeting, just immediately after, and and Lonnie Bunch and other great people uh, were on that that AAM call. And, and there's been some really emotional conversations. We I had people imagine. on my staff on Zoom uh, crying as they talked about I can about imagine. I can experience. imagine. It's, yeah. been, it's yeah. been extraordinarily, uh, all this in the time of COVID. But uh, I know. It's, been, it's, it's, a been, it's, it's been kind of a amazing, multiplying factor, right? It's so many. Yeah. It's been an amazing thing with the, yes. the crisis, the global health crisis, but also the uh, the, the crisis of injustice coming to yeah. terms with in such a way here uh, has come together in the U.S. So I didn't mean to speak too long, but it's just been an extraordinary time no, where I'm staffs and people are yeah. coming together uh, as human beings and having to come together to to, to really explain there. So my staff is very diverse, by the way, yeah. racially and but internationally. That, that is and so precisely the, the, the relationships point. of people are, are yeah. very complex. But this is the time we finally had a chance. Uh, Coming together. We don't talk about these things that often. We just don't talk about them because no. we know each other. But now we, we, we've, we've had to. And it's been, it's been very difficult, but very meaningful and, yes. and worthwhile and uh, has brought people closer together, I think. We have, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure I, t I translate, you know, the, the, the experiences of everyone outside the U.S. when I say that we are following very attentively the situation. I mean, it's, uh, uh, and it's really a challenging moment. Museums cannot stay apart from this uh, situation, from uh, what's happening, you know. They cannot like position themselves outside of these debates and outside this, uh, maybe finally confronting the past of the U.S. and all this uh, heritage of um, discrimination and uh, race and uh, so on. So it's really important. Not only in the U.S., but in the U.S. it's becoming very vivid at this point. So it's really, we're, we're following attentively and we hope that the situation uh, changes, you know, that the situation changes. And As um, do we all. Yeah. And uh, uh, I would now, because I'm mindful of our time, and I'm sure everyone would like, but I, I see that the chat is also very rich, but I would not want to miss the opportunity of having Jess Castellote, who is working in Africa, in Lagos, Nigeria. And he's been there, I, I remember he contacted me and Sebastian some years ago, remember Sebastian? And we were so amazed by it. You're such a brave and uh, heroic person, you know, to build a university museum from scratch in Lagos, Nigeria. With, uh, you know, it's just so amazing. We really want to know more about it and also put it in the context of COVID. We know that in Africa it's not been so bad, at least for the moment. But uh, let us know. Okay, tell us uh, what, uh, what is the situation there. Uh, first, let me say that I'm not heroic and a lucky guy. You are, you are. You are my the... hero. You are my hero. <laughs> I know. All right, the situation here is, is fluid. We don't have information. We don't know what is going on. Very few uh, tests are carried out, so we don't really know. Um, but um, we are in lockdown uh, since uh, March. So now it's, it's a long time. The university is closed. There is no indication of when the university will open. On the other hand, there are a very large proportion of the people in, in the country need to work every day to earn some money every day. Of course. So you cannot have a lockdown. It's not viable. Yeah. There were immediately, after a few days, there were already riots and people looting because they had to eat and there are no mechanisms, social structures to support. So our situation is very special. 
also with the museum. We just started a few months ago. This has come, initially we thought, well, this has come at the wrong time. Now I have a much more positive uh, view. You do. Perhaps it's a little bit crazy to say that we are lucky that we, are have, that we have had this time. Explain. I know how difficult it is. Explain. I know how difficult it is for, for so many people here. The social situation, the employment. But for us, it has been, a, or it is, an opportunity for growth. And, and I see an opportunity for growth in three main areas. We are trying to develop content, something that we have not done much before. So for instance, we have just employed. We are a museum that is closed and we are Till now we were six people only, only six. Now we have just employed one researcher to work on documentation and research. We are now in the process of employing another person. Now, work now. This person we have employed, I have not met her yet physically, but it's already working. We are having meetings uh, regularly. Uh, locally, the university has given us money to buy uh, access to internet, that is an issue here. Uh, we have uh, provided computers to everybody during these days, everybody in the museum. Mm -hmm. so we are working on growth on content. We are working seriously during these days, so we are even busier than before. We are working on developing all the channels for communication, the media, the website, the, the social media, and then we are working also on the governance, taking advantage of these days to strengthen the, our structures. We, we are starting, we don't have experience. Right. It is not even one year since we opened. I know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we are working. So we are, for instance, uh, producing already some programs that we want to start when we resume. So we are developing them. We are working, trying to get the funding that is challenging on these times, but uh, we are really uh, working 100 percent yeah so and at the same time you're very active on social networks too because uh, on twitter and uh you you you're producing this. content for social networks and um give us give us your um you know your coordinates in the chat so that we can I, follow you and so on you you already, already did, okay. put it yes yeah it's so very good. It is, production of content is crucial for us. We also see an opportunity um, in working with schools. Now, right. schools need, especially here, they need resources. The resources on art, in our case, Absolutely. on Nigeria, are not available. So we see, an opportunity, we see a need first, an opportunity for us to create content that can be used in schools, not only the people who will come to the museum, but right. providing and offering free resources to secondary schools all over the world, all over the country. Yeah, yeah, right. on, uh, on art, and now we are, we are starting a program that we want to, to use the museum mm -hmm. to teach about Nigerian history. So we are using some art, uh, some objects, some artworks as a starting point to provide resources on Nigerian history, and this is for all, for everybody. So our audience is, is broad. Yeah. Uh, we are trying yeah. to, to reach many people. So the fact that now a few school children cannot come yeah. is, is worrying, but, but we are aiming at thousands and thousands. Yeah, and you're building an audience at the same time because you are working in the backstage and for the social networks and producing content, delivering. You're actually building an audience for your museum later on, eventually. Okay, so. we are we are now okay on Google Institute. We are now setting up our page on other. So we are um, creating content. We are pioneering uh, pioneering the effort here because we are only two university art museums in the country. The other one is an old one that is, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to say much, but uh, okay, perhaps it could be more active. Uh, so we, have, we are a country of 200 million yeah. so people. We have yeah. plenty of opportunities for us. This is yeah. an opportunity, really. It's really great. And look, 
you, you please use UMAC because you're a member, a recent member. But by the way, thank yes, you am. for joining, you know, uh, UMAC. Uh, please do use UMAC as your channel to, you know, to reach out for other colleagues and also so that we learn more. As I always say, we know so little about African university museums and collections. I mean, we need to have, already this morning we had South Africa, you know, colleagues from South Africa. We're, we're getting there, Maputo, Mozambique, we're getting there, you know, but uh, we still know very little about, um, even without COVID, it's not a matter of COVID, you know, it's just, no. we, we know, we really know very little. And it's so, it's important that uh, you are put in the map and you please use your Mac uh, to, to reach out to a, a larger audience, especially now that we're going to be much more doing things online and so on. And I'm very grateful that you're here and that you participate. Okay, now I really only have time for one or two uh, interventions. I, there is nobody from Canada, right? Um, is there anyone from Canada? No. South America, is there someone from Venezuela? Because it seemed to me at the beginning that there was somebody from Venezuela, but maybe the person left, okay. All right, Africa, anyone else from apart from Jesse? No, I don't think so. So, okay, Europeans, let's close this. <laughs> so, let's, uh, for example, Alphonse, are you there? Spain, Alphonse, Zarzozo, Alphonse. I don't think he has. Are you there? Yes, no, I'm here. Can't. Yes. Hello. Hello, Marta. How are you? Alphonse, so nice to see you. Please introduce yourself. Tell us what you're doing and how is the museums and the university museums collection situation in Barcelona and so on. Tell us. And in well, general, uh, Catalonia, Spain. Yes. Well, um, everything is, is, is uh, now in, in, in lockdown in, in, in the city of Barcelona. Uh, nowadays, uh, just uh, the big, big museums uh, such as the art museums and, and, and things like that are reopening uh, just this week. But uh, uh, small museums like uh, ours, for instance, the, the Medical Museum uh, of, of Catalonia and, and University Museums, are uh, all of them are closed. Right. And the situation, well, we are just uh, uh, recovering from, from a a very very restrictive lockdown in in our country. We I, we, we, I think we we have been eighty days uh, uh, in in lockdown, and and this this has been uh, really uh, hard for for every, everyone. Lots and, of suffering, and, lots of grief, lots of death and sadness yeah. and unemployment and terrible. Well, the, the, yes, the situation is is really difficult uh, for for everyone because uh, well. Um, the economic situation in the country is is now uh, in in a, in a in a very critical, and and we will see what what is going to happen in in, in positions in in not only yeah. museums but in general in the in the in the in, in the world of culture, because yeah. uh, well you know uh, this this uh, area as as you know is is one of the first uh, where cut uh, cuttings of the budgets. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. Coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, uh, and our but, situation. But are you are you planning? What are your plans? Are you going to reopen? Do you have an expected date to reopen? Are you working online, Alphonse? What are what yes, kind of are, things are you doing? We are just working online, uh, and we are, we are doing things uh, as uh, as far as we can do uh, things uh, just online because uh, our our. Uh, um, the authorities, uh, they, they, they don't allow us uh, to, to reopen the museum. And even uh, we are starting to, to, to go there to, to work uh, uh, physically. Is that the university authorities or the, the city authorities? Are, universities are, 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 are closed uh, at the okay. moment. Okay. It is not possible to enter uh, uh, the universities. The campus, yeah. The campus, yes. Okay. We'll see in, in the next uh, days uh, if, if this will be uh, available for yeah. everyone. Yeah, this has been incredible these months because we're kind of planning day by day practically, you know. Oh, we yes. don't know what's going to be tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow. And especially for 
institutions like ours, it's really challenging to, you know, to deal yeah. with this kind of uh, volatility. I mean, uh, come on. Yeah, well, yeah. We're mm -hmm. used, in universities, we're used to some degree of volatility, you know. In yeah. fact, in 24 hours, we can be closed or whatever. But this kind of uncertainty is complicated to handle, right? Yeah. In fact, we're, we're, all, we're planning uh, some, some kind of return after summer. Uh, and we will see what what is going to happen because uh, every everybody here is is very afraid of uh, a, a second wave of uh, in 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 the fall of in course. in the autumn and yeah. yeah okay we'll see okay yeah. i would like to have now for closure thanks so much uh, alphonse thank and, you uh, i would like to have somebody from italy uh anyone could be barbara if she's still there uh, the, someone and then I would like to close with my dear friend, Sebastian. You're not, not prepared for this. I didn't tell you. This, there's no preparation. But you're going to tell us a little bit about uh, France and also very briefly about what you've been doing with Universeum because there are more channels where people can, you know, participate in these uh, discussions and conversations. So uh, it would be important to give, um, you know, announcement of what's happening on that side. So Italy, who can speak? Who can give us an overview? Like two minutes, Max. Where are they, the Italians? I think they left. Okay, we move on to Sebastian, darling. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Marta. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, um, yeah, France at the moment uh, started um, stopped the lockdown mid-May, um, and it was for museum. It was very strange because they, uh, uh, there was an announcement that small museum can open uh, very quickly, um, but uh, the Ministry of Culture was not uh, very prepared to define what was a small museum. <laughs> uh, so we thought it would be an opportunity for us trying to reopen a few of the museum of the University of Strasbourg uh, but we still are working on it because it's not that easy in fact um, the first uh, we still had to wait because the museum we wanted to open is in a park within the university and uh, the park were closed uh, yeah. until the 2nd of June yeah. So they reopened the park and gardens, uh, which is good for us, which means that we're going to try to reopen the museum in two weeks. Right. Uh, um, wow, we'll see, before, we'll see. Before, before, before the end of, uh, of June. Um, the challenge we do have at the University of Strasbourg for us is the uh, reopening of the planetarium. Yeah. Because we know that uh, cinema theaters will be allowed to reopen on the 22nd of June. So uh, that's your measure. Your calibration for planetaria is cinemas and theaters, of course. Of course. Exactly. So, but we are still not sure of the feasibility of it. But uh, the university agreed for us at least to try to do it. Yeah. And they encourage us to do it because um, um, planetarium for us is very important in the sense that uh, we have some uh, money. So, what is the metric that you're going to use? The a quarter of capacity, the social distance between the people sitting, or the people per square meters? It's more complicating than that, uh, but it's it will be it will be uh, the distance. Okay. Um, it will be also we also have a problem with. Um, air conditioning we don't have air conditioning so and it's oh, very yeah. important to get a uh, mechanical yeah circulation uh, yeah. circulation of the air yeah and the second challenge will be the uh, disinfection of yeah. all the seats between two shows yeah of course uh, not only the seats but also parts that are yeah. you know supposed touchable. to be by the public. everything touchable yeah. everything that is touchable and of course the security of the um, of the mediators um, of course and uh, because they can't use masks otherwise we will not be able to 
yeah. to listen to them. So it's going to be probably, uh, you know, uh, kind of. Um, I think really, I think that there's like a hierarchy of things. I think botanic gardens are like the le less less problematic to reopen. Yeah. Then there's contemplative museums where you don't have a lot of touch. And at the end of the scale is things like planetariums and science centers, and science, center. science galleries. It's really uh, going to be very, very, co especially because they also depend on school groups. So I think they will be in danger. Uh, science centers will be, we will see what happens. I'm, I'm very interested to follow the situation because they it's going to be very very difficult for them they cannot open it's not going to be easy for them to open and they don't have a, a significant part of their audiences so it's tragic. yeah absolutely but we do have a good collaboration with the science center in strasbourg mm -hmm. so we are working together to think how to to reopen or to offer a kind of um, partnership. mutual yeah partnerships and so on uh, i know that the big science center in france universiance is uh, working very hardly on it. So I think that will be interesting. It will be interesting for us to see. For yeah, us yeah. To see. Let us know when they open because uh, I'll be interested to I see. I think it will be mid-July. Mid their plan. I would yeah, they plan and they and they planning also a temporary exhibition. They will reorganize the temporary exhibition. They wanted to open uh, uh, at the end of the year. So they kept it, and maybe it's not going to be at the end of the year, but yeah. they are we working on it. But yeah. they have a lot of staff, so they are able to yeah. reorganize yeah. themselves very quickly. Yeah. Uh, if, if I'm going more broader in France also, uh, there was a very good uh, collaboration between, uh, uh, not specifically university museum, but uh, more broadly with people involved in scientific culture. So we have a national networks that was very active. Wonderful. And allow people to communicate very quickly together. And we thought how useful it was for yeah. people to share their experience. And now they organize webinars yeah. uh, on these kind of things, how to re reopen when you're a science center yeah. and you are mainly oh, working okay. with hands-on experiments. It would be very interesting because I've been having questions from some university museum, university science centers in the US especially, uh, about um, information, you know, recommendations, orientations about uh, reopening. And so it would be very nice if we could compile, you know, information about that. For sure, the, there is a website on it. And, okay, um, send me, send me. Yeah, I will send it to you, and uh, it's in French, of course. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Uh, for you, I know it's okay. It's yeah. for the other audience. There's Google Translate, you know. There's Google yeah, Translate. Yeah, of course. And, and this network, it's nice because they also compiled all initiatives from different actors in France. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, and what I want, wanted also to share with you is that uh, though the university is, uh, is closed, yeah. uh, we were... It's an open, we have an open campus, so we couldn't close the campus to the public. So basically, because all the gardens and parks in Strasbourg were closed, most of the people were gathering within the campus of the university. Sometimes it was a bit scary because there was a lot, a lot of people there. Oh. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting to see that uh, a lot of people gathered within the university during this uh, during this difficult moment. Of course. Um, of course, I don't know for you, but um, my experience was also that it was, I don't feel that we were very visible from our university because they, are, they were so concentrated on uh, I know. I know. teaching and it was of, of course very time yeah. demanding, yeah. but they didn't ask us, I mean, to help no. them with, uh, because they were researchers working on the COVID, or yeah. initiatives from the university and they didn't think of us as a, you know, a profession Partner. that can Partner. be part of the uh, promotion yeah. of what was going on and to, to get in touch with the public. We were, we were not, you know, very much... Um, yeah, but in a way, what else is new? I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, they always... No. Yeah. I know, but it's... Um, it's sad. But now, now it's going back and they are very happy for us to reopen and they, they are very keen for us to be a kind of uh, opening window to the to of the course city. of course that's super important and uh, one of the things that reminds me that we should perhaps have a session 
either us or Universeum or many, maybe even both, is about collecting COVID, you know, collecting about the material and the material evidences of the times that we are living. Yeah, absolutely. I think I already saw some things online about, you know, uh, uh, some object of, um, related to COVID. And I think it would be nice to see if university museums are proactively engaged in uh, collecting uh, contemporary materials related to, especially the science and uh, technology uh, museums, but not only, I mean, there are others also. There's so much uh, ephemera, you know, there's so much digital memes and stuff, you know, that should be collected really, because it's uh, some of them super fun also. So I think it's, it's, it's our job too. But uh, now tell us to close, uh, to conclude about Universeum and what you're doing, which is brilliant work. Okay, uh, well, I think we, uh, we had the same, the same will to, uh, to, to get the community together. So the board, we, the first thing for everybody uh, as a network was because we, we have this annual conference every year, which is very important for the networks and to meet together. So the first, the first difficult step for us was to cancel the, the annual conference. Uh, and then, uh, because it came big sooner than UMAC, uh, we, of course, when we decided to cancel, we say, okay, so how we can keep connected with the community? And then we decided to organize uh, online discussions, of course, because it was all digital. The first one was um, um, very... Well, I think the first one was the, the good demonstration of the necessity to just see each other. So basically, even if yeah. there were speakers with a specific thematic and so on, uh, what I will remember about it was um, the fact that there were like 90 pers persons there and it was just like, hi, hello, wow, yeah. wow. you're alive and so on. Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, yeah. so I think it's, it's uh, only for that, I think it's important. And, it, and, and it's, it's important, important, Sebastian. That yeah. is important too. And it showed the importance of uh, our networks, in fact, and uh, our community and the necessity to, to stay in touch and, and, and stay together. So we, we had a, a second round with uh, online discussions. And we also ask the, um, uh, the working groups uh, we have at Univerzium to organize a specific online uh, session. So we're going to have two online sessions in June, 24th and 25th of June, on digital initiatives and on student engagement. Yeah. Um, Did you put here the coordinates so that people can find it? Did you? Yeah, I put, I put the uh, Universum website, so we'll yeah. find everything on the on the website. And what I didn't organize yet, but I think would be interesting, is also to organize a workshop, but close workshop with a person in charge of national networks. Right. So just to share, uh, to have a broad view of uh, each national situation and yeah. maybe to coordinate ourselves how to you know develop tools together and so right on. right that's very good okay so yeah and uh, i encourage you vividly you know strongly to um find each other use this chat it will be made available if you did not have the opportunity to you know um to um copy and so on it will be made available with the videos and i'll be waiting for you next week here at the same time same hour uh and we will go on until i think 3 july i think so this four more and you'll be happy to join there is this situation with the registration i, I just want briefly to explain why because i've been having a lot of complaints ah why do we have a password and so on and so there's two reasons for that one is that in UMAC, because it's global, you know, there are many countries where A, Zoom is forbidden. You didn't know, but Zoom is forbidden in some countries for security reasons. And there is this uh, hacking problem. And so there was a lot of uh, issues raised with the security of Zoom if we choose this platform and so on. So that's the first reason we wanted to have it closed. And the second reason is that 
we're not entirely sure if we open to you know 5,000 people, how many people would appear. And we wanted to keep it informal as it is, you know, we just enter, come and go. And so we didn't want to have uh, many, 200, 500 people participating. We, we just don't want that. We want to keep it uh, low, small, you know, diverse because we will have other, uh, you know, themes and so on, but um, enabling everyone to participate. Okay, so we will be here next week. I thank you all. I especially, I encourage you to, you know, to search for, you know, the links and the information and that was provided in the chat. And I'm really happy to have hosted, you know, such a wonderful uh, debate and conversation. I'm sorry I could not give a voice to everyone, but uh, I hope to see you next week and maybe you will have an opportunity. I hope to do not something by um let's this maybe it's more thematic so today was more like about reopening and maybe we can focus on some approaches uh like you know some themes that are of concern to us so thank you so much and um that's it and i uh, hope to see you see you soon bye bye Bye, Marta. Bye, Marta. Bye, bye.